USA here in San Francisco. My name is Maria and I'm standing here with Amina. Hi, and thank you for taking the time to do this quick chat with me. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. <laughs> Can you briefly introduce yourself and tell us a bit more of your position and the company you're working for? Sure. I work for CS Communication and Systems. It's part of a French uh, group publicly traded in France. Uh, we are the North American division mm -hmm. uh, based in Montreal, Canada. Um, and we work basically for uh, companies that build systems and subsystems um, that have safety critical software. Uh, we have traditionally worked uh, in aerospace mm -hmm. uh, for 20 years now, we've been 20 years in the business, and we're leveraging this experience and expertise to uh, solve the autonomous driving challenges today. So you spoke about challenges right now. What challenges is the industry facing? Because like you said, you're coming from a different angle right sure. now. So I think uh, when we, uh, we've been working with uh, aut automotive companies mm. for the past four or five years, and there are two different companies. There are the traditional uh, tier ones mm. uh, that are in Detroit and that have uh, a strong expertise in functional safety. Mm. They've been doing that for uh, many years, uh, but they're lacking talent. Uh, everyone's fighting for the same pool of talent today in Detroit, in the Bay Area, in Canada, and they need that uh, expertise. Mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, on the other hand, we also work for, with high-tech companies that are uh, here in the Bay Area that have invested five years ago uh, in, uh, in uh, a great technology in autonomous driving or yeah. ADAS, and um, they haven't really thought about functional safety because their main goal was to uh, develop a proof of concept mm -hmm. that they could present to the industry, get more funding. But what we realize is that industry is really coming to maturity, mm -hmm. and now they need to make it functionally safe yes. in order to put it in the market. So at CS, we really have developed over time a very agile way on how to implement functional safety for this company. It's, uh, we kind of demystify it. It's not a big burden and a mm. monster for them. Yeah. And uh, that's how we, uh, we support them in implementing functional safety so that their great technology can be uh, mm. commercialized in the market. So it's um, your, what your company also does, um, because we had uh, Jin Chang um, in, the, in the other interview, and he was like, okay, the whole industry has to work together to really get to autonomous um, driving cars. Is that also um, what your company is doing? From what I understand, it is. Right? Yes, absolutely. So we see uh, two different uh, uh, trends, let's say, uh, or challenges mm -hmm. also. Uh, the first one is um, artificial intelligence. So. Uh, these companies are developing a neural network, mm -hmm. uh, especially for, uh, I'm talking more about level four and level mm -hmm. five. And before we can have fully autonomous cars in the street, we need as an industry to solve uh, or to answer the question, how can we certify AI while it's learning in real time? Yeah. And uh, so CS is also investing on a lot of uh, leading edge methodolog mm -hmm. methodologies in Montreal, uh, there is a big artificial intelligence cluster, yeah. uh, and uh, we use this cluster, uh, universities, companies, startups, to do R&D projects, and we don't pretend to have the solution right now, I don't think anyone does, mm -hmm. but uh, hopefully in a few years from now, uh, we'll have a great uh, uh, solution for, for uh, these companies so that they can, again, uh, uh, implement the software for level mm -hmm. four and level five cars. I guess the other one uh, that we're seeing is, I'm always amazed when I see that today in a car, we have 100 million lines of codes. Wow. Yeah, and <laughs> <Wow>. that's... <laughs> so it's that not wheels and an engine, no, it's codes, codes, it, codes. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, and it's 10 times more than what we have in a whole airplane, mm. in a Boeing Dreamliner, we don't have uh, 10 million lines of codes. So as we're going towards the autonomous driving, we're gonna have even more code, which is more uh, safety critical. I was, uh, a couple of months ago, I was in Detroit. Mm. I met uh, with a chief engineer from uh, uh, an electric steering system company. Yeah. He told me that the this, uh, electric steering system that they're developing for the next generation mm -hmm. will only have by itself 50 million lines of cords. Okay. So that's just steering. Yeah. So that's why the experts are envisioning maybe more than a billion lines mm. of cords, maybe two billion lines of cords for fully autonomous cars. So how can we make sure or how can we ensure that this code is safe? Yeah. I guess that's another big challenge with uh, the AI and machine learning that we need to solve before we have a, a fully driving car in, in the street. Yeah, I mean, I can imagine, like you said, one billion lines of codes, that is a lot. How 
and a little mistake can always happen, of course. And how do you find it in that mm. amount of code? Yeah. So we have also great things, again, that we bring from mm. aerospace. Uh, one of the things we uh, offer the customers is called formal methods. Mm -hmm. And what formal method does is it, it allows you to find really corner cases very early in the process. Mm. Um, and it's complementary with uh, traditional testing. And um, it saves substantial amount of cost because, uh, again, it allows you to find uh, error early in the process and also uh, to, uh, to cover all the corner, some of the corner mm -hmm. cases related to safety properties. You were mentioning aerospace, this is where your company comes from originally, and in a case study you will be presenting, you talk about the differences and the similarities. Can you share some insights? Sure. Uh, first of all, uh, we have to realize that the uh, functional safety standard that we have for, for automotive mm -hmm. today uh, called ISO 26262 has been really inspired from the aerospace standard, which is okay. DO178. They're extremely similar. I mean, I, I'll be presenting that, as you mentioned, tomorrow. Um, I guess uh, the, uh, what we have in, in aerospace, it's uh, the, the airplanes have been operating as fail operational for mm -hmm. decades right now. Uh, now, as we're going towards uh, autonomous driving uh, and uh, premium ADAS uh, systems, we're also going to have fail operational modes. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what we're showing. We're actually uh, presenting how we're using the testing and validation strategies to test oper fail operational mode systems from aerospace mm -hmm to uh, automotive because automotive never really faced a fail operational software, at least before yeah. we have that, uh, that, uh, that, that challenge right now. How does it come that never yeah, thought of that, just like um, look into another industry and um, yeah, implementing like the best practices from there into their industry? How does it come that somebody like you or your company <laughs> has to show them, hey, there's also another way to think about this? Yeah. I think uh, we, we approached as a company the automotive market 10 years ago, mm. but uh, it didn't respond very well because uh, the cycle of, uh, of uh, developing a car was two years, we take eight years for an airplane, uh, okay. functional safety was, is mandatory by regulations for aerospace, mm. for automotive, even today. There, there are no regulations or nothing prevents you from applying the functional safety standard. Okay. I think today, with, again, with the complexity of the code that's, uh, that's in a car, uh, the industry is realizing that they need to do it. Mm. And that's why they're looking for other expertise that they can bring mm. into, uh, into the ADAS and autonomous driving industry and use it to certify their software. So they are looking at a mature industry, more or less, in that um, department and then can mature the, themselves. Exactly, exactly. Good. Uh, last question. How do you like the conference so far? I think it's really a great conference for us uh, that are always open to uh, meet uh, players from the uh, mm. autonomous driving ecosystem. Um, I've met with uh, OEMs, I've met with train ones, I've met with uh, high-tech companies that are developing software. Mm. Uh, I think there are a couple of universities here. And uh, all these different players uh, are bringing a, uh, an, an incredible energy. Uh, and uh, I will definitely uh, come back uh, uh, next time. And, uh, and congratulations for uh, organizing this conference. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Then enjoy the rest of it. Thank you. And yeah, thank you for this talk. Thank you.